Today we'll be doing a quick proof that shows that if you have a multi-tape Turing machine that runs in T of n time, then we can convert it into a single tape one that is the square of that time. So uh, as an example, if we have a multi-tape one that runs in uh, linear time, so this is a, for a multi-tape one, multi-tape, then what we can get out of this is a, a quadratic time a single tape machine. And what we saw before was that these models are equivalent up to decidability, but uh, they are not the same necessarily in terms of uh, how long they actually take. So let's visualize the uh, how we actually did it before. So we had these multiple tapes. Let's say that there are three tapes and there are maybe a bunch of contents on them. And let's say that we had tape uh, one here, then tape two, tape three. Then how we converted it was we had the contents of tape one right here uh, separated between pound signs and then tape two's contents and then tape three's contents. And, that, and that's how we simulated the multi-tape machine on a single tape. The idea was that even though that there may be multiple tape heads on the original uh, multi-tape machine, we, we can simulate that with one tape head on the single tape one, where we can just dot a certain symbol. So like, let's say A right there, then a B here, and then C here. We're going to have a special character for them, and that will correspond to where the tape head was. And to carry out a single transition, what we had to do was we had to scan through the entire tape to figure out, okay, what symbols are actually dotted at each of the places. And then once we figure that out, then we scan back, carrying out the actual transition. Now, there are some things that might happen. Well, uh, we may have to allocate another cell at a certain point, at which point we have to push everything. Let's say B was the last symbol here and we wanted to allocate a new symbol. Then we need to push all of this stuff to the right one position. And that actually does take time. But I claim it doesn't actually do anything in terms of the um, big O runtime. Because remember, the time function is defined for big O. So we can, as long as we have a constant times, the associated T of N or T squared of N, then it doesn't matter actually. So here, what we have is, well, we had one scan all the, across all of this input right here to figure out what the transition is and one, at least one transition back. And I may have to push some stuff over, uh, uh, push all of the tape cells over and uh, all even though all of those take time they take less than um, than and it's always a constant factor more because if I say let's say I'm pushing this B over uh, push all of these things to the right of B over then I would have to scan effectively just scan across the stuff to the right of B and then scan back but that's just adding to the constant in front of the notation. So to carry out one transition in this guy, I would have to do effectively a constant number of scans across this tape, okay? And the thing to note is, even if every single one of these transitions over here moved right every single time, the maximum possible place we could ever visit is at most t of n. It's going to be at most this. Because if every tr time we move over, we, we just move right, then we're going to hit the t of n cell because <laughs> that's how far we actually move. So that means that each of these segments right here is going to have length at most t of n each. So that means that if there are, uh, let's see, so if there are k tapes, then the length of this stuff over here is at most k times t of n, right? Um, maybe we can put a, 
uh, a big O in front of that because I'm not including the pound signs here, so there may be a, a constant change there. But it's like K times the maximum possible uh, distance that any one of the tapes in the original multi-tape thing did. So why does that give a T squared runtime? Well, uh, that mean here we have T of n steps, and the amount of time for each one of them over here is at most k times t of, of n. So the total runtime of the single tape guy is going to be a big O of k times t of n, which is um, how long the tape actually is for the single tape one, times t of n because that's the number of transitions the multi-tape one did. And that is equal to k times t of t squared of n. And so you may think, well, why is k not, uh, well, why is k thrown away? Because Ryan claims that we can get a t squared n. There's no k here. And you may think, well, k is gonna change. Well, it turns out no, because the, the t of n runtime is measured with respect to the size of the of the input. So this is with respect to the input size, which is n. This k is fixed once I make the machine, it's fixed. So this is fixed. If I can make a better x, that'd be good. Fixed to the machine. And so it's not going to change with respect to the input. And so we can treat it then like a constant with respect to the input size. Now, if we were somehow, if we were somehow um, concerned with like making more and more tapes, which is not the case here, then we would consider this a parameter, but it's not because it's fixed to the machine. So at the end of the day, once the dust settles, we have t squared of n runtime, which is exactly what time t squared of n actually is. So hopefully that was interesting. Leave comments down below about the conversion here. As always, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. There are many other links in the video description if you want to support the channel further. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.